Oh, yeah, on YouTube. Um, I got some information and some thoughts and ideas I wanted to share with you and want to get your feedback on. Um, first thing I want to do is apologize for the sound on this because uh, I usually don't make videos in the middle of the day, but I got cars going up and down the street, so hopefully nothing goes up and down the street that's too loud. Next, there's going to be a lot of cuts in this video because I got a lot of information that I have to go over, so I hope that that doesn't bother you. Also, the speed of the video, I tend to think slowly and, and speak slowly, but you know I'm on track as far as the data, so I know everybody's going to and fro and running around, you know, in the rat race and all that. So, but treat, please try and be patient with me. Also, on my video, as, it, as I, after I upload it, let me show you how to speed it up if I'm talking too slow to you. If you go down here and you click on this little cob on the uh, video setting and it says speed normal, you can change the speed. I I run a lot of videos at 125 and. Uh, uh, 1.5, uh, occasionally even 2.0 if somebody speaks real slow. So I get it, I understand. You know, if I speak too slow, just bear with me and you feel free to, to use this device here and speed the video up. So with that said, matter of fact, I'm going to speed this one up. Um, again, I apologize. This may end up being a lengthy video. I apologize about that, but I'm going to go through this as fast as I can. But I think I've got a, I think I've crack the case on this Jonathan Cleck thing. Okay. Um, remember this. Now, when he gave his testimony and he said that Michael the Archangel appeared to him uh, shortly after that, if I'm not mistaken, he's driving down the road and some pickup truck or vehicle got ahead of him and they kind of got into this road uh, car chase thing and ultimately they ended up throwing a bunch of dust and powder out on him and he said it was so thick he said he had a box of sunglasses in the uh, passenger seat of the car and he had to keep changing. And then I started getting threats from people and I, I didn't know who these people were. And, and I ended up in a high speed chase trying to get away from these people that were threatening me. I mean, and I was on the highway one day and um, a, a car pulled in next to me, I was on a three lane highway, and a car pulled up next to me and, and a truck pulled in front of me and the truck slowed down and the car pulled up. It was kind of like, you know, the way the feds would pull someone over. And then this truck had this, truck had this cylinder in the back of the truck. And all of a sudden, this thing opened up, and it started dusting my car, like with crop dusting, and it was this chemical dust coming out of this truck, like a crop duster, and it was like one in the morning on the highway. And I was, I was trying to get away. I could not get away from these people. And I mean, I literally almost went off the road and crashed. I, I happened to have a whole box of sunglasses in the car with me, because I had a sunglasses coming, and I had a respirator in the car, because I had been carving this metal that day. And um, I, I put the respirator on, and I put on a pair of sunglasses, and this dust was coming through the air bit in the car, and it was getting on the glasses, it would smear, it was like oil on them. And so I had to keep changing glasses while I was trying to get away from these people. And I'm like, who the hell are these people? What is this dust? Is this stuff gonna kill me? I mean, I had no clue what was going on. So anyway, that's where this started. Once that started, I called my girlfriend at the time, who I ended up marrying. Uh, she's from the DuPont family, and um, I'm not gonna give anyone her name, but her nickname, I called her Blue. And uh, she uh, she wasn't in the car with me at that time, but I, you know, she had seen some very strange things started happening, and, and so what I did was, I went home and I called her dad, and I said, look, uh, Tom, something really weird is going on. I don't know what's going on, but apparently I've, I've, I've opened the door or something that... Okay, so there you go. I think he was dusted. I think it's affected him. I think uh, he means well. I think his research in the Vatican is excellent. But um, I think that uh, he's got some kinks. So with that, we'll get back to the video here. And, uh, you know, that's something that I had put in the back of my mind. I got to thinking, um, you know, what, what could be going on. So I did a little research on um, chemtrails and alter, how they alter DNA. And, um, you know, just do that. Just put in chemtrails, alter DNA, and you'll be amazed at the things that you see here. And one of the things that you'll see uh, that came up when I did my search is human blood stain strands found in chemtrail uh, changing DNA. So, I mean, look, we know that they're dumping these things on our head. And um, we know that, you know, we li we're living in an age where a satanic society is doing their very best to uh, corrupt human DNA. So with that, I just want to uh, play portions of this uh, 
video here done by Kevin Boss. And uh, just a shout out to Kevin. And he's already condensed this. But like I said, there's going to be a lot of cuts in this video. I'm going to cut it down as much as I can because I know you guys are pressed for time. But please bear with me. And uh, here we go here. Um, the first public, nice, detailed public description was in the book of Kara St. Louis Farrelly, the Santhi, where she says that there are hollow fibers sprayed, self-replicating hollow fibers, uh, that are there to kind of uh, read out the light fingerprint of your DNA, transform it into an electromagnetic radio signal that is detectable via satellite and ground stations. This now that is astounding. Altering your DNA so that it's detectable by satellite and ground stations. Okay, now remember, God is omnipresent. Satan is not. Satan relies on gadgets to get the job done. I, th I think this is obviously a satanic agenda. And I think our brother Jonathan um, may have gotten doused with... Uh, some of this stuff so that you know that's just my opinion but i i think it's valid this is what we found out by analyzing information dealt with the campaign communities in the united states she never mentioned the name morgellons in the book but um, if you look at these morgellons who had heard about the morgellons Half of you, okay. let's just have a look at them nice tree trees this is a german tomato that got some German rain on top of it. This is real time. Now watch the Morgana what it does. He loves us. He's getting excited and he's trying to get close. I don't know exactly what they react on, maybe an infrared radiation. So these are basically, it's bacillus of a certain type of uh, um, fungus. And this fungus is, first, if you want to look at it, it's airborne. It's not a single fiber here and there. Um, it is glowing under UV light. So if you take a UV lamp at night, um, you can see those fibers airborne. And they're billions. Not every. Look at that. I mean, stuff is everywhere, and we all have planes flying over our head on a regular basis. But uh, I, you know, I, I'm a believer that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Okay, if you've got Christ living inside you, He's going to protect you. He's going to cover you. That, that's just my opinion. But continuing here. All right, but every now and then, you can see them fly around. And these fibers, these fungus, is infecting the human body. These fibers, fungus, are infecting the human body. And with 95% or 99% of the people, nothing special happens. They're just embedded somewhere, and uh, your, your biology is keeping the, the fungus population low in your body. They just function as a plasmonic antenna to send out a signal, but you don't get signal. You don't get it. No visible signal. So, so it functions as an antenna to send out a signal. Think about that. You know, a lot of people complain about being targeted individuals. There's something to ponder. We, we would guess 100% of the population in Europe is infected. It's not a big deal. It's not dangerous. As long as the body can handle these things. Some of the people cannot handle it. And then... The, the mycelium is starting to grow within the body and starting to multiply. And at a certain point, they are extracted by the skin. And you can see that they have these ability um, to collect uh, colors. You have blue morgellons and you have red morgellons. And nobody knows where these colors come from because they are of technical origin. It's not a natural substance. So you can see them when the skin is opening. You can see them under a microscope if you make a blood analysis. You can see that the blood is infected, and you can let them grow artificially in a petrus, petri dish, 
And if you look at them, you see they're a little bit more complex than a simple um, um, fungus. They have kind of, kind of organs inside. They have little red stem cells of an unknown species that are self-replicating as well. Little red stem cells of an unknown species. Does that sound like DNA corruption manipulation to you? Um, and apparently they produce other structure. This looks like um, a sporing body. It's like, like a unit where the, the, um, the bacillum at a certain point is forming a mushroom, a fruiting body. And then from the fruiting body, you would expect the spores for the next generation. And this is a mushroom, this is a fungus. So this seems to be the, the containment for the spores, because if you put this into the petri dish, you can see the next generation growing. And other things you find, now it's getting fringe, it's really getting fringe, is fragments of insect skin being extracted from a organic. So something... That is interesting. Insect skin being extracted. Okay. If insects, why not reptilians? You know, why, why not others? species. Uh, remember, John, one of Jonathan's things is saying, he, he, you know, that we're all uh, fallen angels, we're all Satan's seeds, of course, Satan the serpent, reptile, uh, and, uh, you know, that's his, his claim, and um, so, you know, even though Mark 13 clearly says there's the wheat, there's the tares, there's apples, there's oranges, Going together in the world, uh, Christ Himself will come and sort all of us out. So, just wanted to point that out. We're not all reptilians. We're not all Satan's seed, contrary to what He says. Makes these uh, something from, from this disease is making insect parts or insects grow within the human body. He said it had been tested in the last Iraq war. This was the, the war was only done for the purpose of testing the system. I'm not talking about the uh, the most recent one. The yes, the with, 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 with Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they sprayed that in Iraq. And they sprayed it in Iraq. And uh, we had single news, for example, that they fought back the Iraqi army by utilizing microwave weapons that gave them the feeling that the skin burns. Yeah. This was in public media, in, in, in the media. And this is not because the microwave weapon had the intensity to make it burn. This is more because the RNA was triggered to create a sensation of burn. So this had a kind of agent within the bodies of the Iraqi army. It has all other aspects of it. Exactly. And um, from, from the text, he says you have these psychotronic weapons, making them give up, making them fall in love with the American soldiers, whatever, uh, a long list of psychotronic uh, functions. And you can make people sick, you can make them die of cancer after one year, you can make them die. Psychotronic weapons, psychotronic weapons, messing with your head, mind control, okay? That's the reason I think, you know, I, I said in my last video, you, might, you guys might want to check it out. Um, where I said, uh, you know, that we're not all, that, you know, that Satan did not create man, okay? So uh, you might, might want to check that out. In six minutes, and you can make them die in six seconds if you want to. This is what he listed. And, um, but the most, uh, most interesting thing from, from this paper is that he said that they spent 10 billion US and one, no, half a year, I think it was half a year, to optimize the cluster topology. And this is something, it, it sounds just like science fiction if you say it like this, but if you really think about it, if it is only about infecting humans with a virus like synthetic RNA, you could give a damn about cluster topology. Cluster topology starts to become an interesting topic if this RNA cluster is supposed to carry a soul. Only then, a soul or an artificial intelligence or whatever, an RNA, 
Um, so so th this is kind of the, the first time that I had an, an input, an idea of how do they turn people into biorobots. You have the RNA cluster within the air, sprayed in the air with a defined distance from RNA to RNA. And within the human body, the same RNA cluster is prolonged within the cells. And now, whatever is carried by these clusters, the artificial intelligence, or a program, or a soul, whatever this is, can travel... He says soul. Okay, one of the things, I did a lot of research on uh, New Agers and, and channeling and Branton's material years and years and years ago, and they call humans containers. Okay, containers. Uh, these entities are just mesmerized at, um, um, you know, the human soul. Man, I'm just looking here. It looks like a gray alien right there. That's trippy. All right. From the dust into the human being. This is smart dust. And this is what they call smart dust. And now, uh, this is all kind of grad theory. Yeah, if you take the Morgellon topic, uh, Morgellon topic is, you find it described as a transhumanistic technology to extract the light from the human body, turn it into a radio signal to read out what happens within the human, and the opposite way to insert light, you know, the radio frequency to the human to make him feel whatever you want to make him feel. If you take this Morgellon concept, if you take the, the nanocrystals, the nanocrystal concept, and if you take um, all the other things, and then you look into some internal papers of the NASA. This is something that went online, I don't know when, uh, 2000 maybe, or... He says NASA, but it, it, he means NASA. That's his accent. A little bit earlier. It, it wasn't meant to be published. It was an internal lecture um, in, the, in the NASA facility in the United States. I don't like the way you say NASA. <laughs> it's not just your thick German accent, or are you putting his head in there intentionally? <laughs> no, it was not intentional, but it is like this. And, and they, they kind of inform each other about future strategic issues for warfare, projecting to the year 2025, with a subtitle, big subtitle, The Future Is Now. And if you look through it, you find the concept of some sensor swarm, smart dust. You find nanotext, which is identical to the Morgellon function. And you find co opted insights. So somewhere in the American, in the American intelligence community, which right. seems to be uh, black magic inspired. Oh, well, there are certain individuals who say the U.S. Army is totally being satanic since about the 1930s. Uh, sometimes I would say it looks like definitely the uh, intelligence, the, the army base intelligence community, especially whatever was founded by the uh, Tavistock Institute, which is CIA and Office of Naval Intelligence. Those are definitely black magic institutions. Institutions. From their origin, going back to the Tavi stop, and this is Carl's part one in my interview, I guess, as well. Um, but uh, NASA knows all the components and it is interlocked in the United States. If you go to Silicon Valley, you have three big buildings. One is Singularity University, for the founder Ray Kurzweil, who is dreaming about, in their interviews out there, the Kurzweil is dreaming about sending nanobots to other planets to harvest energy and matter, to multiply the overall, in, overall intelligence of the human machine civilization. Originally his words. And then he asks himself if, if there's a god that exists, and he says, not yet. Yeah. This is Ray Kurzweil. Now, next building from Singularity University, Transhumanistic Headquarters, is Google Headquarters. Uh, where he now is uh, head developer, same way called Spire. And on the other side of the, tra of, the, of the university is NASA headquarters, the one who is certifying the planes to spray, according to Kara's model. So all these members of this black brotherhood even sit in the same street as members. And uh, I, I think it's, it's kind of about... Do you feel very safe? Uh, looks like. But that's because people don't understand the consequences or are they... High program already. Some people do understand the consequences. The Russians did understand the consequences of spraying the military components, which would have meant looting the harvest and falling under Monsanto. And they decided to stop spraying. And the NSA realized, I guess, that the CIA is a black magic unit. And the NSA, at least parts of it, is still into uh, American interests and the American. Um, 
actually human interests? Yes, whatever. So uh, the answer on, or, or no, not the answer. Um, maybe in a reaction to realizing that whatever is happening there, following demonic or Archon interests, um, the NSA downed Evergreen International. They downed the CIA spraying. Uh, and the, and the kind of lit. Yeah. They downed it, because they shut it down. Yes. NSA has one option, this is cutting money flow. If, if the CIA wants the Congress to send troops to Iran to start World War III, and they are blackmailing members of the Congress, sending millions to them to vote for their interests, the NSA... See, I've said that forever, that, you know, I, I felt like Congress is being blackmailed. Okay, we got this pizza thing, you know, pizza get, get thing going out. Um, a lot of people are fighting that. I think a lot of members of Congress are involved, a lot of world leaders are involved. Alex Jones did a thing exposing Bohemian Grove. I think the satanic involvement, infiltration, is just beyond anybody's ability to grasp, or most people's ability to grasp. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, you know, Kleck is constantly harping on the Vatican, the Vatican, the Vatican, and you know what, he's right. I gotta give uh, Kleck kudos on that. I spent some three hours last night watching this video, Tears Among Us, talking about how the Vatican has done their very, very best to manipulate and alter the scriptures. Uh, that's not saying that the Bible, the King James Bible that we have today is not, not, you know, valid, or I'm not, I'm not saying that at all, because there's been a lot of theologians that have fought to make sure we have uh, good, solid scriptures. but. If you watch this video, it's two hours, 36 minutes long. Uh, so that, that's, it's quite a, a commitment, but it, it's very, very informative. And again, Jonathan is right. I have no doubt, you know, these pictures and things that he's showing, sculptures and things he's showing is accurate. Okay. I don't fault him with that. My problem with him is, you know, he thinks he's a fallen angel. I think his mind has been messed up or altered. Uh, he thinks we're all fallen angels. Again, I, I think he's got some problems. I think uh, as a result of uh, um, the psychotronic weapons that uh, you know are, are in this smart dust and uh, nano dust particles that we're all breathing in, I think they have the ability to zero in and, and control a lot of people. And, you know, you hear some of these these people, uh, you know, going on shooting rampages and things like that. I, I think they have the ability, I mean, unless you're in Christ and, and you have a hedge around you, um, which is biblical, because Satan, you know, wanted to uh, attack Job and was complaining that, uh, uh, you know, he had a hedge around him. So that is biblical. Uh, personally, myself, I have had, back when I was uh, doing some research on wanderers, and um, I was picking the brain of a wanderer, and about four or five weeks into that, I had an entity uh, try to appear to me out here in the yard one night. I go out and I pray, and uh, this thing tried to appear to me. It was about 18 inches off the ground, but it was about seven, eight feet tall. And before it could even completely appear, for for whatever reason, I, mean, I was just kind of like shocked and taken back. I wasn't expecting anything at all like that. And um, in a real firm, strong voice, authoritative voice, I just said, oh, really? And it just started and was gone within five seconds. So, and then I was left standing there in the dark all by myself, wondering what just happened. And I think that was God, the Spirit of God living in me that protected me. So, um, another thing that you guys might want to study is get into Russ uh, Dizdar and the infiltration of the church. Uh, this particular uh, channel, uh, they have messed and messed and messed with this poor girl. And um, she's not even posting anymore. Um, they wiped out entire videos from her channel. And, um, but, uh, you know, you'll do well. Uh, Nyla Rossini, I guess. 
And um, there's a video here, Rust is our infiltration of the church. You might want to check out. Also, check out shatterthedarkness.net, shatterthedarkness.net. Get tuned into Rust Dizdar. And with that, I think I'm just going to go ahead and end this video because it's already too long. I thank you guys for hanging in there with me. And um, if I can do anything at all for you, let me know, okay? Take care. All right. God bless you. Bye now.